ask whether you have any question or not. Okay, this is for next chapter, which is chapter four. Equilibrium of, park, of rigid body. Yes. <coughs> Come on. <laughs> or five, nineteen, twenty-two, thirty-three, forty-three, which are two D problem. Then we have a subject that I would probably not get to it until next week. That's our two force member, two force and three force member. And then ninety-three, ninety-seven. 99, 106, and 117, which is 3D. The same system as we had it before. 2D, two force member and three force member. Could be 2D or 3D, but basically 2D. And <coughs> then we go to 3D. Well, we should be able to finish the chapter quickly because you already have the basis are being discussed all the detail of the principle of a static being discussed in chapter two and three. Okay, before I start the new material, is there any question about the homework you just submitted? Could you open up on the shaft? Which one? Uh, it's a, like a gearbox with shaft sticking out of it. I see, the one that has the, okay, I know which one you're talking, uh, number 80? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is one of the problems that many students ask a question about, so I put it on the board. So it is a, a 3D problem. The picture is not clear. It says, I believe, it was a negative. This was a negative, no, this is going that way. Yeah. On the x-axis, you have a couple, what's, how much was the magnitude of that, 840? 840. Yes, 840, and unit Newton meter, pound foot. You don't remember? You already did all the Newton, homework. Newton, Newton, meter. Newton, let's put it, doesn't make any difference. Newton meter, is that correct or not? Yes. Then this is the <coughs> Z axis, and there were an axle going like that down here. Yes, sir. And then also there was this, that there is an axle going that way, correct or not? On this one, they put an arrow like that. Is that correct or not? I believe this one was 1,200 yeah. Newton meter. Correct or not? Yes. yes. This one was 900. Yeah. I don't know negative or positive. Let's put it this way. It was going like that. Yes or yeah. no? Yeah. So that's the, that's the whole question. The arrows put, put like that. These are the couple going about this three axes given. Is that correct or not? It was going like that, I know, because I answered that question already 10 times. <laughs> so I know, but those of you who didn't come still have the question. Most of the students who, but, but this was one of the questions they had. Is that correct or not? Now, these are couple, three couple, but it's going in different direction. We talk about it. The couple could be, as I said before, if this is x axis, y axis, z axis, couple could be like any other. First of all, couple is a moment is a vector. Everybody knows that. So this is a couple going this way. It could be positive, it could be negative. This way, it could be positive and negative. This way, it could be positive. However, if a couple going this way and it is in this direction, it has x, y, and Z component. This is, seems to be a 3D problem, but actually it is a 2D problem. If you look at it carefully, it says, "Okay, we want to find the sum of this couple." Okay, the sum of this couple is F, FC. Is that correct? We got our couple. We want to add it together. Fine. So that's what we do. This one is very simple. Is that correct? Look at. Put your hand there. It is negative because this is the x-axis. It's going negative, so we strike there. No, here you cannot put only number. This is a 3D problem. You have to come up with R, J, and K. It's obviously. So therefore, we have here minus 840i. Oops, sorry, i. <laughs> Newton meter, I put the unit at the end. Is that correct or not? Now come to this one. Now, if this was in a space, I have to break it into, this would be a vector, I have to give you more information. Because if it is in a space, it would have i, j, and k. But however, it did not say that. It says this. This is, if you go back to the, read the question carefully, that it says this line is in the plane of y and z, which makes it true. Now, 
Many people did that. They realized that they didn't have that problem. The problem was about the direction, as you said it there. The direction there is very important, whether it's a plus or minus. So all you have to do is this. So here is your y direction. Here is your z direction. This is the plane of y and z. This line, so this is negative y. This line is going like this. Let's show it with double arrow. From now on, actually, this is the practice we have to follow. When there is a vector, if it is one arrow, it is force. If it is double arrow, it means <coughs> still is a vector, but it is a moment. This is a practice all the engineers do, so you can do it that way too if you want. So that's the vector. It is in the yz plane. Is that correct or not? Yes? This angle is? So this is something you did in week one. Can you break that into two components along the Z and along the Y? Of course everybody can do that. What is the magnitude of that was 1,200, yes or no? So this one can be shown this way or that way, not both. Or we can show it, this is, this is the typical way of showing it this way or this way. Is that correct or not? Yes? So this is 1,200, let's show it with the vector. This is 1,200 times cosine of? And it is positive. So here I put the rest of it in this one. 1200 cosine of 20 degree, but it is k. Is that correct or not? However, it has, when you look at this one, this has a negative component. So it would be on the y axis. So it would be minus 1200 sine of 20 degree j. Is that correct or not? Most of the people have the problem about this one because many of them, when they draw this one, they put the arrow like that, realizing not what's going on. But look at that one. Look at the direction of that one. The direction of that one is going that way, upward. Is that correct or not? If it's going upward, therefore your double arrow going that way. Now look at it. Z is positive or negative? Z is positive, Y is? positive, both of them going upward. So therefore, this is 20 degree. So we have another two components there, which is 900 times cosine of 20 degree K. And we have plus of 900 sine of 20 degree J. You add up this together, so that becomes one single 3D couple, yes or no? Because you have I, J, and K, and you can define that as a vector, yes or no? But for the second moment, isn't the z direction in the negative direction? Because it's going to the left? Or this one? Correct. This yeah. is positive z. That is a. Oh, okay. That, okay. That, yeah. Okay. That's what I draw there. Okay. It's, it's uh, some people for some reason they put the, they put the z correctly. They put for this one y negative. But actually, this is the same as going this way. Is that correct? So z positive y. Is that correct? Yes, you said you can slide. Is that understood by everybody? This was the most sort of thing. There is another problem that I wanted you to do, with, which is in the handout well, uh, as well. Is, did you do problem number 128? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you understood it in totality? Yeah. Can we use the same idea for the centroid? That's the idea of the centroid. I want you to do the handout. I want to do that handout problem because when we get the centroid, I don't want to repeat that. Please get your handout. There is problem number three on the handout, which is simpler than the one you did. However, the same idea. The reason I'm doing it, I'm sure most of you did. We did it probably correctly. But I want to elaborate a little on that one. This is exactly the same principle as principle of the centroid. Is that correct or not? Yeah, this problem that it is on your handout. Yes, it is on the handout, which is exactly like problem number 128. It's different, yeah, the children standing on a rack. So here is the problem. So I'm going to put the problem on the board for you guys. Although you have it there, so here you draw your, again, typical x, y, Z axis, then you put your board there, somehow, something like that. I hope these are parallel to each other, so oh, it's working like that. All right. Three children, I'm going to explain that because you understand without even reference to number, because the number I have given you in the handout is different from the one in the 
book because they change it from different, you know, because this comes from different version, but that's the same thing. Actually, this problem is problem number 127 in your book. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, so this is not correct, so let's do it a little bit better. Okay, it should be going like that. Oh, oh. So anyhow, there is a child standing here with the weight of W1. Is that correct or not? Yes? There is a child standing here Let's call it point A and point B, W. And there is a child standing here at point C, and it is W3. I don't put a number there because all you already did the homework. Everybody understand that. This is what we want to do. These people, three children standing on the raft, causes this raft to rotate one way or another and pushes down it a little bit. Is that correct or not? We want to replace that. In here, we are calling it equivalent system. Is that correct or not? This is equivalent system. But if you look at it, this problem is replacing three children with one single person. Correct? Yeah. Now, one of them was, I don't know, one of them in this problem that I have given you, one is 85. So let's put that number down at least for that person. So the first one is 85 pounds. And the second one is 60 pound, and the third one is 90 pound. Okay, if I'm taking these three people and replacing with one single person <coughs> according to the equivalent system, summation of the forces in this system one should be equal to summation of system two. Okay, so one of us have to go there, which is a heavier side, not me, of course, that that should be equivalent to this three. Children, yes or no? So you should weight at least 235 pounds, yes or no, to replace those three children. Because these two systems are equivalent, yes. But that's one condition. Uh, the second condition was the moment of that system should be equal to the moment of this system. But remember this. If we want to go to chapter 3, this is how ch uh, chapter 5, the central, this is how it works. This is W1, W2, W3. This should be summation of the W. That's how we write it in, in chapter 5. Summation of the W. Correct? Now, but this, I don't know where to put that. Because this, in effect, I said this is the centroid for that one. Yes or no? For the, those three children. So I put it at C. I don't know the location. So this is x-axis. So I call this distance x bar, is that correct or not? I can call the other distance z bar, but as I said, uh, you already have done your homework. I'm just, for those of you who haven't done it, I explained to you to see everybody to be on the same page. Is that correct or not? Now, I can do two things. I can take the moment of all of that about point O using R cross product, which is very tedious and it's not applicable here. Is that correct or not? I can do the same thing. The, the second condition is this, the summation of the moment Let's say about point O of system one should be equal to summation of the moment about the same point of system two. This is system one, that is system two, yes or no? But rather than taking moment about o, o, in this case it is easier as we discussed before, take the moment about x-axis, y-axis, and z. Why do I want to use cross product and so on and so forth? As you see, none of these forces have any moment about the y-axis, they are all parallel, correct? So everybody of you know that. So in order to calculate x-bar, which is the location of this centroid, or the z-bar, because it has two coordinates. First, I take the moment about the z-axis. Since these two are equivalent, if I take the moment of this person about the z-axis, should be equal to the moment of these three people about the z-axis, which gives me this equation. It gives you w1, x1, because this person 1, it is at distance x1. Everybody under this is x1. Yes or no? Yes. I'm not. So the second one becomes plus w2, x2. All of them are given. This is all number given to you. 85 times whatever it's given there. Is that correct or not? So many uh, inches or foot, etc. w2 times this distance. And w3, the, the, of course, all of them are? Negative, but this one is also is negative. negative, so all the negative cancel each other. So you can put all negative or all 
positive, but that's the same thing. So I'm putting all positive, but remember, in actuality, those are already. Plus W3, X3, which are the moment of this system about the Z axis must be equal to moment of this person about the Z axis, which become summation of the W. Is that correct? Because the 235 was summation of W time X bar, yes or no? Yes? So what's x bar equal to? Summation of wi xi divided by summation of w. This is a technique you are going to repeat again in chapter 5 for the finding the location of the centroid of some masses, some areas, etc., etc. Is that understood? Yes? And for our problem, of course, that gives you your x bar. As I said, you put here 235 times x bar equals to w1, x1, w2, and you put number there, you calculate x bar. I'm sure you did it. This was problem number 127, which was the principle of centra. It wasn't your homework. Right? I'll purposely do that. But your perform is a notch above that. Is that correct or not? What was your homework? 128. Now, what was your homework principally? Anyhow, everybody understood that way. You can calculate x bar and you can calculate z bar. But what is important here, this was work. Remember that. That's very important. What are word is? These are the moments of the forces about the z axis. We call them qz. So remember that. Anytime in future I ask you what is q or the first moment, you should remember that q. Is that correct or not? Those are the moment about the z-axis. We, we go to the centroid. We, these are both being advanced. So remember, whether you call it Q or not, that right now is not important. So like, actually, that's not Q, Q because Q has a different meaning because it is about the area, not about the uh, weight. But that's the same meaning. Remember that. This is the moment about the, write it down here, moment about the z-axis. Z and then when I write the z-bar, Z bar becomes summation of WI, ZI over summation of WI. This will be moment about, moment about <coughs> X axis. So remember that. Because then the distances become all Z. Is that correct? Okay. Now, your problem, if you want me to explain that, it takes a couple of more minutes to explain that. Your problem was not like that. Your problem was this. That what was, how do I, what, you have to use the same procedure. Everybody understand. The same procedure, you should have done it. I don't know whether you did it or not. Your question was this, that where should I put my fourth child, which I don't know where it is. So this distance is x, and this distance is z. The weight of the child was given. I don't know how much it was, 75 or something. Let's put whatever. 125, okay, 125, or, come on, that doesn't make change the problem, okay. <laughs> 125, yes, all right, so the question is now, here are unknown, here are the first question that I raised, your question, the unknown was x bar and z bar, because this is not at the center of the raft, it is some, not, somewhere, which depends on the, where these children are standing. This one, the question was, where should I put the 125 pound for person here in order the result and to be at the center? So this would become given to you. This is half a distance here. So if this was five, I don't know what it is. It was five foot, so this will come two and a half feet and two and a half feet. And the sum still is the sum of the forces. So your two unknown was x and z. But still, you should have done the same thing. Take the moment about z axis to find the x and take the moment about x axis to find the z. If that's what you did, so you should be OK. <coughs> Correct? All right. So that is, we are finished with that chapter. Correct? Let's not move on now. Any more questions? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer your question, but I want to, I'm anxious to get to the next part, which is chapter 4, which is the equilibrium of rigid. Body. Anyhow, these were the two questions that most of students came to the office hours about today, so I thought you need to know both of them, principally very important. Okay, now we go to the equilibrium of rigid body. Remember in chapter two, we were talking about equilibrium of 
particle. Those we are we are assuming all the mass was concentrated at the centroid of the object. Here the object are going to have dimension. Therefore, the same system applies except we have to consider the dimension of the uh, of the object. But let's first go to the principle of equilibrium. So we are talking about equilibrium of rigid bodies. You know what the body is. Still, we are considered not rigid. You will find out in ME218 or in the strength of material, all of the bodies are not rigid. They are flexible, so they are elastic, so they change. But here, we are assuming everything is not going to change, so the body stays the same as far as the form. Uh, the formation is concerned. However, each item, this is, the, this is the proof of it, which is very simple. Now that we have gone through the chapter 3, this part seems to be very easy for you to recognize what's going to happen. So let's say that we have an object here, and of course every object first, it has a weight. Is that correct or not? Yes. As before, we have seen it that you can put a cable here and pull the cable. We create a tension T. You can put a force here, push it down with the force F, could be a force of a spring attached to the system, or etc., etc. It could be in contact with another object, which we have to put what? We have seen that in the past. We have to put a normal force, normal to the direction of the, of course, uh, direction of the slope of where we're connecting it. And something new here that you haven't ha seen, and this is the part of the structure usually is connected to other part of the structure through some sort of connection. We call them either pin or hinges. Look at that door. That door is attached to the frame with those hinges. Is that correct or not? So that's a type of connection. We may put the rod, nail it to the wall. Is that totally it? Or bolt it to the wall. Is that correct or not? Or all sorts of other correction. Sometimes we do the connection in such a way we can rotate this. Everybody understand this rotation is also that item there is a connection. So for time being, let's say that connection is replaced with R1 and R2. This R1 and R2 is the connection, which I haven't talked about it. The result of the connecting this body to another body. Is that correct or not? Yes? We are assuming this object is in equilibrium. Correct or not? If this object is in, in equilibrium, so therefore, being, you have to write that. This is all about equilibrium. Since it is all about equilibrium, therefore, T plus F plus N plus W plus R1 plus R2, or whatever you have, all the sum of them must be equal to zero. zero. We have seen that. We have done that many times before. Correct or not? Now, what's the condition that this, what this gives me? We'll have to use the method that we used in the last lecture. We should reduce this to one force and one couple. Remember that. This is the proof of the idea. We don't need to do that all the time. But to prove what is going to happen, I pick up an arbitrary point A. This point A could be any point. First of all, I put A to show you that's arbitrary. It means A can change to any other point. Is that correct or not? Then I reduce all of them to one force and one couple. This was the subject you were covering all extensively in this homework. Yes or no? Now, if I want to do that, what should I do? What was the force at A? What force should I put here? What FA should I have here? FA, you can define it. You don't have to put number here. FA, I have to <coughs> take this here, take this there, take this there, take this there, move all of these forces to point A. Or call it summation of all the forces in vector form. Yes or no? And that's what you were doing in all this homework. You putting it up, uh, taking them away from the point, put at that point you want to reduce it to one force and one couple. So what couple should I put at A? Maybe I should put that in a different color to, to not mix it together. So this is FA, and this is MA. All of, both of them in the space, because this is 3D. Is that correct? What was MA? What, how did you do that? Very good. Moment of all these forces, and include if you have any couple, all of that about point A. a. Very good. So then. MA 
become equal to summation of all the moment at or about point A in a vector form. So again, remember, this MA is not that MA. This MA is this MA. This is not MA. We, I explained that to you before. What's that? Read it for me. Summation of the moment, moment about point or at point A. Is that correct or not? Yes? Some people make this do, they make M A, they forget about this. But that's a really happen, it's a mistake totally. Now, if all of that was taken away, replaced with this force and couple, is this system in equilibrium? If R F A is there, this object is going to move in that direction, yes or no? But since it is in equilibrium, this F A should be equal to? Zero. Zero. So some of the forces this time must be equal to system zero because the system is in equilibrium. Okay, so I get rid of that, so I'm partially in equilibrium, but it still is not. This object is still, if this come out to, let's say, 2D, and it comes to a moment like that, this object is going to rotate that way. I don't want any rotation because I, equilibrium means no motion. Is that correct? We discussed that long time ago. If it is no motion, this FA should be also equal to Zero. So I don't care about this two. This two should be equal to zero. So what are the two conditions from now on for equilibrium? In any object that is in equilibrium, some of the forces must be equal to zero, and some of the moment must be equal to zero. And that's the mistake few of you made when you were doing the equivalent. You were putting some of the moment equal to zero. I said, no, no, no. Are you talking about equilibrium? Or are we talking about equivalent system? In those systems, they were not in equilibrium. If they were in equilibrium, some of the moment would have been equal to zero. Yes or no? Correct? So that's it. Those are the two conditions of equilibrium we have to uh, satisfy. However, how many equation is that? Depends on the type of problem we see. So I'm going to put it that in a table very simply. And you know answer to all of them. Let's divide that into two categories. Remember, it's a 2D category and 3D. OK, so in 2D and in 3D, then our condition is this. Condition one, summation of the fo forces must be equal to 0 in vector form. Yes or no? OK, yes? yes. In 2D, how many equation is that? Two. 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 Because each force has only x and? Why? So from now on, you use it this for particle. Remember, this was the two equation. You constantly use it for particle. It still remain the same thing. But for part particle, that was the end of it. Here, because this is a rigid body, that's not sufficient because it has dimension. There was a point. All the forces were going through the point. Now you have a car. There is a weight. There is a wheel here. There are four wheel tires. There are different location, depend where you put the engine, where the people are sitting, where you put the luggage, that the, the reaction on the tire will be different. Is that correct or not? It's obvious. Therefore, I have to use what? The red one. The, some, of, some of the moment should be also equal to zero. zero. But when I write some of the moment in vector form equal to zero, how many equations do I get here for the 2D problem? I'm glad you said that. One or two or three. It's 2D. In 2D, you only have one. one. I already was. I'm glad you said that. So that means <laughs> sigma m about which direction? If you are working in the plane of AB, if you are working in the plane of AB, this would be K, K or Z direction. Is that correct? Or so sigma m about the Z axis must be equal to zero if you are working in A x, y plane. So actually, it gives you how many equations? Three. Three equations. So what did we do after that? Now, after that, remember, we have to draw free body diagram. These are all discussion that we had in the past. You are all aware of that. Then we have to find which forces are known, which forces are unknown. So the question is, among all those forces are there, which forces are known forces? OK, and which forces are unknown? So you determine that. Of course, if it is 2D problem, how many equations do I have? This is the, the only three equations. Previously, we had only two unknown. Here, you have three, three equations, so you can have maximum of three, three unknown. Very good. Three equations for 
three unknowns. Now, here come to 3D, because I'm covering the whole chapter. This is the end of chapter, by the way. The rest is just doing example and showing how the connection works. So this one is 3D. How many equations do we, do we get here? Three. 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 You already know the answer. Sigma fx equals to zero. Sigma? Four. Sigma f? Z. Z. Again, remember, these are a scalar equations. You no need to go to the back to this principle. From now on, in this chapter, this is all required. You don't go to the vector and all everything we did in the past. All you have to do, use equation up. First, you have to use free body diagram. Then you choose, of course, the system of axes. You have to choose that one for any system. Then you determine known and unknown forces. So then you, after your free body diagram, you set up your equation. You get your unknown forces. Is that correct or not? Either three here, now here. How many equations do I get there? Three. 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 OK, what? Now, that equation, this is in the form of a vector. Don't write. This is it. You see, this is in the form of a vector. But that doesn't give us any help. But when you write them all in the vector form, which we usually don't from now on, the end result is summation of the forces in x direction must be equal to 0 summation of the, I'm oh, sorry, this is the moment. This was the moment. <laughs> summation of the moment about x axis must be equal to 0 summation of the moment about y and summation of moment about z. So this equation turns into three equations. Sigma m about x axis equal to 0. This is x axis, so please write this. Summation of the m about y axis. That's why I was stressing so much that you learn moment rather than R cross product. You learn this technique by taking moment about x axis, y axis, and Z axis, because that's the from now on, that's what we need. We don't need R cross product. As I said, in engineering, most of engineering work, as long as it's undergraduate work, most of the analysis would be based on the force distance, especially early strength of material classes, so on so forth. When we become more advanced, then we go back again to math format. Is that right? You go to 3D stress analysis, of course, you have to use all metrics, et cetera, et cetera. Is that kind of vector method? Never done. This is us. How many unknown do how many equations do I have? Six. six. How many unknown? Six. Six. Very good. Six equation. Six unknown. Now the next is the only thing we have to answer is the type of connection. Because every structure is not connected to other part of a structure through some kind of connecting system. Is that correct? Right? That is the one that you want to learn. And that is in your handout. So please bring your page one of your handout. This is the type of connection that we will see for 2D and for 3D. Everybody has that handout. You should have. I have a few extra ones if anybody doesn't have. You really need to look at this one to understand what you are talking about. Everybody has one? OK. I have few just like right there. Because you, can, you don't want to miss anything from there. Anybody here? Okay, three. You can give it back to me. You have one, yours, okay. If you have it in your phone or wherever, your, your one more, two more, okay. Here. First of all, on the first column, uh, you have type of connection which is related to 2D problem. The first column is 2D problem. <coughs> Everybody has this. You want to take a look at that. And the second column and third column, this is a typical of what you see in every book, including your book. This may be copied from a different book, just for the discussion purpose. <laughs> this, the sec two and third one is the 3D. So write it down on top of that. Now, some of them you already recognize there, so I'm going quickly by that. First of all, you have an end of the rod, that's what I'm saying like that. You see in the picture there, connected to a cable and the cable is connected to the ceiling or somewhere, yes? We have seen that many times. So that is what you have to be careful. In your quiz, I gave you the same technique. There is a force here, there is a force here. Remember, the tension in the cable depends where you cut it. Is that correct or not? We are not concerned about this ceiling. We are concerned about this object or this assembly. If I'm drawing this pre by diagram, what should I put there? But when I cut it here, I should put here a force in 
correct? Tension in this direction. Is that correct or not? How many unknown is that? Be careful now. How many unknown is that? One or two? See, you're not answering. You're avoiding. How many unknown is that? What the way I showed you? Now, two. <laughs> Every, the first question I asked you in this class was, what's the vector? You said the vector has a magnitude and has a direction. How I show you the direction here? No. So if that's the general question, the, both the, if it's 2D, the magnitude and direction of it, both are unknown. So it becomes two unknown. Remember that. If there is a force, nothing given about that, no magnitude, no direction, there is two things that you have to work. Fx and Fy, or alpha or magnitude. Is that correct or not? However, this is the way, what you're thinking is this. If I give you alpha and that's the cable, and I give you the direction of the cable, then how many unknown is that? Oh, One. So it depends on the, what is given to you. Now, I put here the, the next one is the one I want you to be careful about because I'm going to make this is very general. It is the end of the, some structure. It is touching the ground. We discussed that many times here, and that ground is frictionless. So obviously in physics you know what you did there. You take this out, you put a normal force there. But let's make it more general. That's the whole idea here. This one you know. The next one and next one and next one you don't know because you haven't seen it before. But there is a definition there. I can show you this two ways. I can show you a bunch of connection and say for this connection use this kind of action, this kind of reaction, etc. or go forward. Or, or let you understand what is going on here. That understanding is the most important part of this analysis. Why do I put here when I take this out? First of all, I have to take this out. Remember that we discussed that. You don't leave the air and put a force there. That's wrong. Because the rod pushes toward the ground, the ground pushes a, the other way. Is that correct or not? So if I remove the ground, at this is the effect of the ground that you show it like an end. Is that correct? Why? Why did you do that? That's the whole point. If you can answer me that question, then I can go to the next one and next one and next one, and you do it by yourself without me telling you what to do. This is it. You know why? That ground was preventing this rod from going down. Yes or no? Yes. So write it down in your note. Anytime you connect two objects together, the object becomes restricted in motion at that point, yes or no? You're connecting that door in order not to let that door move. In, in certain way it's moving, in certain way it's not moving. Is that correct? So connection causes the structure, <coughs> the restriction in the motion. Now first let's understand how many motion do we have. We discussed that again before. The motion could be along the <laughs> x-axis, the motion could be along the y-axis, the motion could be along the z-axis. This is, if you have 2D or 3D, this is the complete format of it. Yes or no? This is 2D and this is the all three of them. The same thing for the moment. In 2D, the only rotation was about the z-axis. In 3D, you have a rotation about x, y, and s. Actually, in one of the previous quizzes, I asked you to show me that rotation. So you have, I put it all, let's put it all in positive format. This is positive, positive, and positive. This is mx, my, and mz. You restrict the motion of the structure. In any of this one, you would put a reaction. This one, we restricted the motion from going from the object, uh, we restricted the object from going up and down. Therefore, I put a force here. But the object is free to move in this direction. Is that So I didn't put anything. However, if there is a friction, then I should put a force there. You see what happened there? Now apply this technique to the next one, and next one you come up with your answer. The reason is, tomorrow I may give you a new connection, which is not in this list. Is that correct? Or I have done that in the past. Therefore, you decide which freedom you have, which restriction you have. If you have a restriction, you put an appropriate force or moment. I'll explain that in a minute. But if I have Freedom, I don't have to do anything. Is that correct or not? Based on that one, let's go to the second one, which is, of course, the second one is the, on the rough surface. On the rough surface would be what? Depends which way it moves. You put F and N. Is that correct? Or AX, AY. Is that correct or not? 
That was simple to do. Now let's go to the next one that you haven't seen that. This is also useful. Look at that one. That we call it a pin connection. Pin connection is something like that. Look, if I have here a pin connection, guys, do you see that? Look, yes? I put here a hole, I put a pin here, a hole is like that. You will see it there, right on that door, there are two pins sitting there. Look, no, is here, can this rod move horizontally? No. Can it move <coughs> vertically? So I should put here AX and, but can it rotate? Yes. Yes. So I don't need to put any rotate moment there. Is that correct or not? So the next answer to the next box is, when it is a pin, you see you answer it by yourself. I didn't help you. You did it yourself because you used the idea. So that idea is very important. So if this is a rod connected to a pin, which is connected to the ground, when you remove that, first of all, remember that, you have to remove that because when they are connected, the action and reaction are equal and opposite. opposite. You only do free body, di free body diagram. Remember, I explained that to you. Free body diagram, disconnect the object from all its connection, connection replace it with appropriated forces, which we had it through a particle, now appropriate forces, and I asked you to put a, in the parentheses to put moment. Now here is the moment of truth. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> the moment come into the picture, because before I asked you to write it down, and you didn't know why, and that's not. No, still, we are not there, but I'll show you that. So here, when you <laughs> remove the pin, at the pin, you put AX at, if this is point A, you put AX at, a Y, again, because you have restricted two motion, not third one. The third one is a rotation, and as you see, it's rotate. Is that correct or not? Yes? OK. Now let's go to the next one in the box. What's the next one? Co color, whatever you see. You see that? The sliding, the, the, there are four different parts. All they put it in one box means all of them are the same. These are different times. Um, you see the roller type sort of thing. It is no friction. Therefore, how many reactions should I put there if there is no friction? They are free to move in the horizontal direction, but they are restricted to go on the up direction, so there are one force going up. So please write it down. So the other one is all the roller type, which is like this. They put, like, this is typical. It means this, if there is no friction, means this can go, if you, this is on ice, very slippery, very hard, this move this way, is that by, without any friction? However, when I remove that, I should put one reaction only, which is the box next to it. The next box to it is, look at it, a slider. Everybody see that? And that one also has the freedom to move in the X horizontal direction, but it is restricted in the vertical direction. The last one is fixed support. The last one is this. It is, this is the rod. It's embedded in the wall, concrete wall, etc., etc. Is this a pin? No. It is, we call it fixed support. It says that. So what should I put there? Now, what's the difference between pin support, this was pin, and fixed? This is the wall, and this is our fixed. <coughs> of course, you can see that here. Look, guys, this is pin support. This is fixed support. Look at this. If I load here, what's the here? What's the rotation here? Is there, do you see any rotation there? Oh, this is an exaggeration. <laughs> here, theta is zero. So if there is no rotation, what should I put there? A moment. But you haven't felt that moment yet, have you? OK, so this is what we are going to do. Everybody, please, take the, what, your sharp pencil in your hand. Everybody, please, take the sharp pencil, the, one of these pencils. Take the sharp part, put it in your hand. Everybody. <laughs> OK, go ahead. Are you doing it? Yes? Nothing happened then yet, OK? Then put your finger here, push it down. Hard. Are you hurting? <laughs> yes or no? That was the moment. Did you see that? That was the moment that you're <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Right? When you do this, you see that you're holding like that, you're pushing this one, the, the end wants to go up, your hand bring it down, and that hand is creating a moment <laughs> equal and opposite, because the sum should be equal to zero. That's exactly the difference between that and the pin. One more time. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So therefore, this was also intended to work like that. So this one, 
we are going to put what? AX, A1, and MN. Notice all this reaction, we generally put it in positive direction. And if the answer comes positive, means that direction is correct. And if they are negative, then we have to, OK, right? All right, now I can do two more things. I can finish the, this idea on the other one or go about 2D <coughs> problem. I don't know, we better finish the idea while we are at it. Now let's go to 3D problem. But in 3D, you have to be a little bit more careful because before we forget the idea. Remember, the whole idea is about the freedom and the restriction, okay? Look at, look at go to the, uh, to the rope. The rope, what do you put there? Again, the rope like is this. Is that correct or not? This is number one in your table, correct? But the rope is how many unknown? Now be careful what you are answering. <laughs> I ask you this once, you, are, you don't want to say mistake. If I don't give you anything, that tension is how many unknown? Three. 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 Tx, Ty, and Tz. Tz. We, when we talk three, you have, I have to give you three pieces of data. If you look at any problem we had in before, I have to. Or one, if I give you what? If I give you the direction. lambda, the direction, that's right. In many problems, the direction of lambda is given. In other words, that force either three unknown or one unknown depends whether you write it in the form of T equal to Txi plus Tyj plus Tzk, which is three unknown. Oh, these are all magnitude, these are vectors, so you just, uh, or you write T equal to its magnitude times lambda, that lambda of the T, of dependent, I give you two force, you have done it for two sides of the cable, etc., etc. Correct? Right, one, two. Now, next one. Next one is uh, contact with a smooth surface. How many force do you put there? Smooth surface. How many put do you put there? There is no friction in one. either way. So only one. why? It's obvious. You are only restricting. So put one there. Yes or no? These are 3D problems. And the next one is what? No, remove the support. You see, you are, you're still not doing See, I asked you to do it. You cannot do that. Remember, every time I do that, I, dis I don't put it here. I disconnect and then put that. You're doing it because you don't have time. I understand that. But don't do that in the quizzes and in your homework. Is that understood? You disconnect the connection. Get this straight right now. You show this to any engineer who passed the static. He or she knows that this spot was a pin. Everybody understands. You don't have to tell. You've got the two forces there, recognizable of the pin, because no motion this way, no motion this way. Everybody understand what I'm saying. When you put these two like this, you are ruining the whole static equilibrium. Use this. Doesn't mean anything, because the forces are equal and opposite. You know that the rod pushes toward the ground, the ground pushes backward, the forces cancel each other. Is that correct or not? When you want to show that, you want to show what was the effect of the pin on the rod. Everybody understand that. So please apply that. We saw that before. You have to do it again. Anyhow, let's go to the next one, because at least we want to do at least one or two examples. So the next one is rough surface. How many do we put there? Two. two. Why two? Just Why not three? Oh, wait, yeah. three. Because there is one going in vertical, one, two, because your roughness in this direction and roughness in that direction could be different. If you have a concrete and you have some, some sort of you know, line there, it could be different friction in one direction than the other one. Is that correct or not? So you have two friction forces in 3D and one go. Is that correct or not? This is this one. Now, what is the last, the, the one that you haven't seen that? This is a pin here. But the rod goes like this. Is that correct here? But is this pin going anywhere? So you have the restriction in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. That's similar to the pin. But this, in 2D, we call it pin. In 3D, what do we call it? Ball and socket. All this problem is nothing. This part, everybody can do. In all this problem, you have to recognize what kind of reaction you have there and put the right reaction there. And by the way, if you put the right, wrong reaction, I don't look at those equations because it's all wrong. Everybody understand that. Yes? The free body diagram, 
and recognition of those connections. What are you designing for me? You want to design this rod and you, wrong, you put the wrong connection here, wrong connection here, you are doing something else. Is that what is not what I wanted you to do? Is that correct or not? Therefore, free body diagram become essential part of it. this analysis. And for writing this equation, you have done it so many times. Everybody, you are getting even tired in here after you all this homework. You say, well, how many times do I have to do this? Is that correct? Well, sigma fx, sigma fy, sigma fz is all depends what forces you put on your object. Is that correct or not? As far as the action and the reaction. Okay, next one. Next one, we saw ball and socket. So in ball and socket, which is similar to pin in 3D, so ball and socket, this is item, I'm sorry, so I should put black. So that one, as you, I said it, AX, AY, and AZ. Look at the next one. The next one is roller. So you only have one force up. Is that correct or not? Yes. Assuming there is no friction. And the last one, or the last two, this one is the hinge that I was talking about. OK, how many unknown do you have that, at that hinge, guys? Look at your hinge in your, your hinge in your system is going like this. You have an axle going like that. And hinge sitting here. Is that correct? Is this hinge going to move anywhere? So if you want to put that in a reaction format for that, if you're removing, let's say there is a panel here connected to this hinge, you're removing the panel, the panel is here, but the hinge is not there anymore, right or not? So I should put there what? This hinge, this door at this point are not moving up or yeah. down. So I have to put AX, AY, and AZ. Can I take this door, rotate it like that? No. Can I rotate it like that? No. Can I rotate it easily this way? Yeah. Yeah. About this axis, yes or no? So as you see here, that door, you have a freedom about the, about the y, y, y axis. Y. But the door cannot rotate like that, can you? No. Or rotate it this way. You can rotate it this way, but you cannot rotate it this way. Yes or no? And about that, the other guy. So as you see, you have here, for this one, you have MAX. And you have also MAY. But this is the picture in your hand. Your hand, the, 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 the Hinge is on the z-axis. Yes, the freedom is a rotate. Actually, once in a while, you have to go clean those hinges in order to be able to rotate it easily. Is that correct or not? If they got the stuck, you cannot open the door. Is that correct or not? Yes? So that's it. So there is five of them. However, five of them, I have two hinges there, five here, five there. How many are known is that? <coughs> Ten. And only I have six equation of? Equilibrium. So if I have more unknown, I cannot solve it. So you make it a little bit simple. That's the way it is done. If there is a heavy door, instead of two hinges, I put three or four hinges. Why? I'm putting closer to each other. If I put the hinges close, write it down. Three, two hinges very close to each other. The moment become negligible. So we are, although the moment should be there, but we are assuming, com because I'm putting this close to each other. Look at this door, which is heavier than, let's say, your apartment building that you are sitting there. Those are a little bit less expensive, so the door are less heavier, because the inside is nothing there. It's not solid wood. So you put two inches there. Here, you have to put three inches. Otherwise, you have moment there, and you're going to break it. So therefore, that's what it is. So instead of the five, we are going to have Three, is that correct? So each one become A, X, A, Y, and A, Z. Sometimes we remove one of them further. Then the, the, the bearing is the same thing. This is the bearing, ball bearing. This is the bearing, and this is the shaft that is rotating through it. So again, remember, this point are not going anywhere. So A, X, A, Y, and A, Z. The only rotation you want is in the direction of the shaft itself. Is that correct? Or which is, they are both in the same category. Yes, yeah, so, and the last one is? Fix, which has all six of them, yes or no? Now, I said that, now go to the next page. Now, I want to show you this first. See, I wanted you to think about, what is this now? The answer to what we just said. All the answers are, now don't copy this. Copying that is just memorizing. Look how you achieve your goal by looking at 
the condition of movement or not movement. Is that correct or not? That's the way I want you to go about it. And from now on, you should be able to do all those homework, except the two middle one, which is the two force member. Of course, saying that, I should do an example of two of every category. Yes or no? I don't know how much time you have. I have five minutes, so let's go to that one. Because your quiz is simple. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I know, I know. You are complimenting all the time. Listen, that's right. It is simple. So let's, let's just look at the problem number one. At least have some idea quickly, but I'm not going to. I, don't, I will do all things they are going to do. Example. Don't worry about it. But you try your best to do as many as possible. You put your action given, put your reaction. There are no, use these three equations. Is that I take the moment about a point, a moment about every point should be equal to zero. Doesn't make any difference. So use three equations, three are known. For example, if you're looking at that example number one quickly, so what we have there is this problem. So please, let's take a quick look there. If I find my note, okay, there. Okay, here it is. Just, just to show you how this works, I'm sure you understand the technique. So here is the bed rod. This is a roller which is attached here. This is the pin. They show it like that. Is that kind of, this is the force of 390 pounds with the slope of the slope of 512. And then there is here. I promise you, this is going to happen. What is that? That is now a couple applied there. You see that? that? That couple, the magnitude of couple is given 800 pound foot and the distances here is 8 feet and here is 4 feet and here is 3 feet and this is the ground and this is like that and that angle is given equal to 30 degree. I put it on the board for the benefit that everybody can see that. Is that correct or not? Yes? Now you want to draw free body diagram of this object. Yes or no? So the free body object is removing all its connections. So this is it. So then you put your action forces. I'll go a little bit quickly. I will finish this problem perhaps next time. Here, you have two components. You don't put the force. You break it into component because what? Because you have horizontal distance and horizontal distance and vertical distances. So you break that to 150 pounds because that is 5, 12, 13. 390 divided by 13 is 30 pounds. 30 pounds times 5 is 150. 30 pounds times 12 is 360. So you have here a force of 360 pounds. You still have here a moment of 800 pounds foot or a couple. Then you put your unknown. Typically, we put our unknown in the color form just to show you the difference between known and unknown forces. What you have to put here, now we know that. What is that one? Oh, by the way, that was point B. This is point A. <coughs> this is point B. You can call this one point C and B or whatever. Now, what should I see? This is disconnected. What was disconnected? It was a pin. So what do I have a pin? We already said the pin is AX and AY. AY. So therefore, or here in this case, is BX and BY. So therefore, we put here BX and BY. Notice, regardless of what I see, I put this in the positive direction. And what do I put here? It's a roller, yes, yes or no? No friction. The roller is a normal force perpendicular to the surface. We have done that in the past. So that is normal force N, or let's call it A. So because A now becomes it. But I know the angle. This angle is, we went through this many, many times. This angle is? That angle is? 30 degrees. That's right. How many unknown do I have? Three. How many equations do I have? Three. So I'm going to do that next time. But look, you write sigma fx equal to zero, sigma fy. But the key equation is then? Moment, where do you take the moment? That's the question. Where do you take the moment to solve this problem? You can have all choices. You can take the moment about A. You can take the moment about C. You can take the moment about D. You can take the moment about D. Which one is the best choice? C. 
Possible. B, when you take the moment about B, Bx and Dy going to be eliminated. You solve this problem. And this is the typical of all your problems. Do as many as you can. And then Tuesday, we are going to discuss about the detail of each problem with you. And then take that. We are done. So we go to the quiz.